Hey everybody, so have you seen streamers that have like a, a border that goes around them and it's got colors and it's like it's moving in motion? I, re I saw that um, and I thought it was really cool and I couldn't find a tutorial on how to do it so I kind of figured something out and it was actually pretty easy and I just wanted to show you that today. So this is an example of the transparent border that you could use while streaming or gameplay. This one is very modest. Right, just kind of goes around where your camera is going to be. And then this one is kind of really crazy. It moves nice and slow. and <clears throat> That one's really flashy, really jazzy. It, it stands out if you're looking for modest, but I thought it looked really cool. And that's what we're going to get into. All right, so first things first. We are going to start with a new fusion composition. Go over to your effects, drag down a fusion, drag, drag down a fusion comp, and then we're just gonna stretch it out like that. And this is something that you kind of need to take into account: is um, how long do you want this animation to be? So it's better, you know, longer than than not. But at the end of the day, if you're using this in OBS, you're gonna be having it on a loop, and if you're using this, you know, on gameplay that is edited. You're just going to be, you're having it on a loop as well. You're just copy and pasting and making multiples or making a larger render of a loop that you could then clip down to the size of the video. So you want a nice long fusion comp. Click it, go into here. We've got our media out. We're going to first start with the trusty dusty background node. That's going to be one of the starting points of a lot of fusion compositions is your background. We're going to make this transparent. I am by no means a DaVinci Resolve expert. I'm fucking learning like the rest of us. We're going to grab another background. Merge it over that. And then we're going to get a rectangle mask. And we're going to do that. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to hit solid. And then we're going to bring up the border width. And all of this is going to be to your likings. How thick do you want the border around the camera to be? You know, something like that. 0 0.0094. Be a little thick, but you get the idea. And so what we're going to do, we're going to bring this over to the end because we want this rectangle to stay on the top the entire time and you could change whatever color you want this to be just change your background color i think black is just kind of standard so we're going to come over here we're going to copy Control c click off Control v and now that we got those selected we're going to hold down shift until the little line turns blue and now nothing happened we have two rectangles right and so with this one you're gonna want to change the color to an accent that goes good with your border we'll go to the background node and red is my second favorite color so we'll do that and so now we have a red rectangle under a black rectangle kind of crazy. All right, and so the next step is we're going to come over to our effects and then open effects and then you're going to want to come down to warp which is at the very bottom. And you could mess around with all of these and see what works best for you and and let your imagination fly. I'm just going to show you an example of what can be done and once you kind of get the concept you know, you um, can do what you like. So we're going to get ripples. We're going to hold it and drag it down there. And so we don't want this white nonsense, but you kind of get the idea. It's warping the red rectangle that we can then animate to go around. So over on the shine, we're just going to click that. Shine is gone. That is good. And this is kind of where it's going to be reacting to right if you just want like one kind of blob going around and acting strange you could do that 
kind of figure out where you want it to be. Mess with the settings to make it not so extreme. So we come to the amplitude. Frequency, kind of just mess around with it. Kind of low key is kind of kind of better with this. You could turn the amplitude down, frequency up. And kind of see what's going to look good. We could do the opposite, frequency down. Amplitude up. See, I like that better. You get kind of like a more wavier, like a water-like. And so yeah, so just kind of mess around with this and the way that we're going to animate this to be nice and slow and kind of just morphing over time. I'm just kind of dragging around this to see what I like. And you could also come back over here to your or to your rectangle and bring the border width down. Come back to the wrinkle, turn the amplitude up, and it's kind of more low key. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so we're going to do the animation process of this. And this is what is affecting your whole effect here. And so we're going to make keyframes on these positions right here on your X and your Y. And what I've kind of come to the conclusion to is if this makes a complete circle, it's not going to be as harsh when the loop starts over. Does that make sense? Because if someone's watching this, they don't want to see like it reset. That it just wants to you want it to be a little buttery loop so we're gonna go to our first frame and we're gonna do that we're gonna hit a keyframe on our position <clears throat> you come about a quarter of the way through and just drag this down another quarter of the way drag this over Another chunk of time. And then finish it off here. Drag it over here. And you could stretch this out. And that's going to, you know, the timing of it is going to change when you do this. But that's going to be the path. And then you're going to want to watch it play through a couple times. Do you want it faster? Do you want it more intense? You know what I mean? See, I kind of like this look because you almost can't even tell that it's moving. And then you can. It's nice and slow. Almost like water, right? It's a little intense right there. And you see that jump? So we could come in here on our last frame and move this right on top of that come back out and we'll watch that again oh yeah see that that's much better because you don't want that that sudden jump from start to beginning and then just kind of mess around if you wanted to you could copy these control c control v hold down shift line them all up and then you can change this background to blue. Like a very dark blue, light blue. And then clearly you're going to want to change up the ripple. Or we could try something else. I'm going to hold shift, pull that out. And we could try a dent, a warper, waviness. Let's try waviness. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of wonky. And you're going to have different borders. I don't like waviness. Get the vortex in there. Right? And kind of make it go around. Obviously you're going to want to change the, the size way down. And if you wanted to animate this to just come around, pull it away even, you could animate the circle just like we did with the ripples. I'm going to stick with the ripples but we're going to want to change it up or you won't be able to see the blue. We could just come through here and what I'm doing is deselecting all of these keyframes 
by hitting the arrow and it takes us to our next keyframe. You can see down here it's going to take us to our last one here. Deselect. And now we're started fresh with this keyframe. Turn that keyframe off. You'd have it come around the outside. The main thing is, is you want it to be different from the last one. So we'll set a keyframe here. And bring this over here. Bring this over here. Over here. And then the last one. Bring it right on top. And you can smooth out these edges. If you click that, you can curve them. And then you got something like that, where you got two different colors kind of just waving around. And then what you can do to really add some flair, make some room, is come up to stylize. And the coolest one that I saw with all of these different stylizations is the edge detect. You drop that down here, put it on there, and then it's going to give the red like a glow. And over a transparent background, that glow looks like it's like leaching onto your footage. And it looks like really cool. And then you could just mess with this with the edge width. You know, you could add extra glow, right? It has like a deep, dark line in the middle of it with like a soft glow. Mess with the brightness. And then we could do the same with the blue. And then you got two glowing independently flowing like plasma border. I think it looks really cool. And if you have like a logo, you could slap it on right there like I did on this one. I got my logo there. And I think I might have several borders on this. But you can kind of see, just mess with it and see what you like. I think I changed the frequency of that ripple too a lot. It's pretty similar. So if the edge detect isn't giving you as much glow as you'd like, shift spacebar, glow, do the first one, add, hold down shift, connect it in there, and yeah, that looks cool. Because now that glow is almost like a constant, constant fixture on there. I really like that. And then you could add your little logo there and kind of blend your logo in. You could add a glow node to your logo as well. So it doesn't stay out of place like I did on this one. I put a little glow on it, change the color, and it looks really neat. And now to the export. This was also a pain in the butt, was exporting it as a transparent background that you could just drag into OBS or just drag any footage and line it up to that. And so in order to export this, we're gonna go over to our delivery page. And these are the settings you're gonna want. Under format, you're gonna want QuickTime, Codec, GoPro, Cineform. I don't know why this is our option to get a transparent background is GoPro Cineform, but that's the way it is. There's not one that says, do you wanna, you know, whatever, whatever. And then, you got your RGB 16 bit. And if you just want to render a part of your timeline, you mess with these. You could also do the quick keys I for in and O for out. One of the most important settings that I almost forgot to tell you is you want to hit this export alpha. If you do not hit export alpha, this will not have a clear background. So then you're going to find where you want to save it, title it, add to render queue render all and let it render out and then once you have it rendered out locate it on where you saved it bring it in and then just to prove to you that this is see-through we will get a solid color 
we'll bring it in and we'll say that this is your you know four hours of gameplay we're gonna drag that out we're gonna change the generator color over here bring that up something like that and then so clearly this isn't long enough before you duplicate this what you're gonna to want to do is resize it it's up to you if you want to butt it up to the corners I typically do and if for whatever reason this border doesn't seem to be fitting like say you cropped your camera footage you could disconnect this and then you have more control over making it fit your next step is to duplicate this we're gonna click it hold down alt drag and then you could grab those two now and you're multiplying it and then it gets faster and faster you know until you have enough to fulfill all of your footage and then just trim it down and then you got your border and this is super easy to bring in over to OBS while you're streaming so you're gonna have this playing on a loop in OBS while you're streaming or whatever stream software you use uh, another thing I wanted to bring up is this is really it's gonna take a longer time to render whatever it is you're rendering so expect your render times to go up by like almost 25 percent it is kind of a lot uh, it's just one thing that people don't bring up but that was something that I did notice so yeah that's about it I just wanted to show you guys that and then let your imagination run wild if you you know come up with any other ideas to make it look cooler let me know post it down in the comments alright that's gonna be it for this one have a great day